to Nearpod, it's going to take you to kind of your home screen. It's called My Library. This is where you're going to find all of the lessons that you have downloaded or made so that you can provide them to your students. So when you're first getting started, you're going to have a couple of different options. The first option that you're going to have is to use the Nearpod Lesson Library. In the Nearpod Lesson Library, you can find all kinds of lessons that are already done for you. It could be on any of the subjects that they have to offer. You can search by the grade level, by the type of lesson. You could even search by state standards. If you're just in general looking for a lesson at the top, you might type in um, in the search bar what you're looking for. And then you can look around. So let's say I want to do an ELA lesson and I want to work on reading comprehension for grades three to five. You'll have a chance to kind of preview these different lessons. So maybe I want to take a look at this one. I can go through the lesson and see if it's what I'm looking for. Keep in mind, if there's anything that you don't like, or maybe you think it needs a little something more, you're going to be able to edit it. So for example, on this one, the students are reading a story from ReadWorks. And then they're going to be answering some questions that go along with that. They have a little worksheet to fill out about the key details. They have some open-ended questions that allow them to type in answers. And there's also a quiz uh, on what they read. So this looks perfect for what I want to use it for. So I want to click Add to my library. That's going to add it back into my library. So if I go back to my home, I'm going to find it. There it is right there. Now, if everything looked perfect and I, this is exactly how I want to send it to the student, then I could go ahead and provide it to them now. However, since my students are going to be doing this individually, there's a couple of things I want to change. I can click that Edit button and I can edit the lesson. So since my students are going to be doing it individually, I don't want this think, pair, share. They're not going to have anybody to share with. So I want to just delete that whole slide. Perfect. Now, I also want to get rid of this thank you slide because my students don't need that. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is adding some sort of a video in here. So I could add an additional slide and I could add web content. And we're working on inference as our reading strategy this week. So I found a little video on inferences that I want to add. So I'm just going to grab that link and put it over in my Nearpod presentation. And I'll save that. And now my YouTube video has been added here towards the end. So they'll be able to watch that at the end. So now it looks exactly the way I want it. And I'm going to press save and exit. Perfect. Now I've got a lesson that's ready to share with my students. We'll talk a little bit more about live or student paced lessons in a little bit. But I want to show you the other way that you can create a lesson to share with your students. And you can create your own lesson. So if you don't find anything you're looking for or you want to create one specifically for something that you're doing in class, you can create your own. You can either create it in Google Slides and import it. But what I recommend that you do is just go ahead and create the lesson right in Nearpod. I find this to be the easiest way. If you've already got something created, then sure, go ahead and import it from Google Slides. So it's going to give me a blank lesson, and I'm going to title this lesson Inferences, because that's what we're working on this week in reading. Would help if I spell it correctly. <laughs> All right, so now that I am here, I'm going to add slides. I'm going to start with my title slide. So I'm going to just add content and add a slide. This is going to be, give me a blank slide to work with. Now, first I want to do is make a cool background because I really like fun backgrounds. Upload a background that I have right from my computer, or I could search for something online. Hmm, let's see. So I'm going to go with this green and black and gray background here for my slide. And I'm going to put my title in. And then 
I'm just going to upload an image that I have stored on my computer. And resize it so it looks nice on there. Now I've got my title slide, I'm ready to start adding some more slides. So the next one I want to add is a video that I found all about making inferences. This one's a little bit of a longer video and so I'm going to go ahead and grab the link for this lesson and add it as web content. and it's going to insert that right into my lessons. This is great because now students don't have to go to an outside source. They'll be able to watch the uh, video right within the Nearpod lesson. After this, I want to add an activity. And I think I'm going to add a Drawlet. With Drawlet, you can upload a worksheet that you might be using and you can have them draw directly on the worksheet. So I'm going to upload a worksheet that I have. And there it goes. The students are going to be able to draw directly on the worksheet and I'll be able to look at it just like I would in a regular classroom. I'll be able to go through their worksheets and see if they answered the correct questions. So far I've got my title page. I've got the YouTube video that they're going to watch and then a draw it. Maybe I want to add um, another activity. I think I will add a time to climb. Time to climb allows the students to climb up a mountain um, as they are going. So what I can do is put a bunch of questions just like I would with a quiz, but as they're doing it, I'll show you when we do the preview, they'll be able to climb up the mountain. So I've made several questions about inferring that I'm going to have the students answer. I've indicated on here which question answer is correct, and I'm going to save that. <clears throat> now I've got the time to climb activity in there as well. So let's take a quick look and preview what we have so far. When you click on the student preview, it'll allow you to see how your students would see it. So they would go through the lesson, title page, They'd watch the video, they would complete a draw it, and you'll see here they can actually write on here, so they could indicate which one they think it is. And I've got my time to climb activity, which is kind of like a little game here. So they have the question, and they would make their answer. There we go. So I'm done with the student preview. Now. I think I want to move this time to climb because it's more, um, the draw is a little bit more complicated than that. So I think the time to climb is a little easier. So I'm going to move the time to climb first so they get some practice and have some immediate uh, feedback on whether their answers are correct or not before I have them do the draw it. So next what I think I want to do is take the students on a virtual field trip. These are really fun and I think I have a way that I could incorporate this into our lesson on inferences. So let me take a look here, add content, and go to the field trips. I can type in anywhere. I'm thinking I want to type in some sort of amusement park. Let's see if we can find anything fun. So I'm searching for roller coaster and I'm seeing the Santa Monica Pier. So let me preview that one. Ah, I think this one will work perfect for what I'm looking for the students to do. It's got a bunch of different rides and they can look all around that. So I'm going to add that one. And what I'm thinking I'm going to have the students do is I'm going to have them make an inference as to where we are on this field trip. So I want to add an, an introduction slide before this so I can kind of give them the instructions.
and I'm going to add in our title. And I'm going to give them some written directions here. But some of my kids aren't the best readers. So I want to add in some audio to also give them the directions uh, so that they can hear them. So all I have to do is press this audio button. And I want to record myself. And I'm going to start. All right, guys, so on the next slide, you are going to get to take a virtual field trip. I want you to use your mouse and search all around and be looking for clues to help you make an inference. I want to know where you think we are. So look for those clues and get ready. And I'm going to save that. So now the students can play my audio on the slide in case they're not sure about the directions. All right, perfect. Now I want to move this slide in front of the other one so that we've got the field trip. And then afterwards, I want to ask them an open-ended question for them to be able to tell me where they think we are. So adding another slide, add an activity, and I'm going to click open-ended question. And I can type my question. Where do you think we were on our virtual field trip? What clues did you find? Perfect. So now they've got that open-ended question after the field trip. So I think this is good for what I'm looking for them to do. It's just a quick activity that they're going to do in class. So I'm going to save it and exit it there. <clears throat> Now that I've saved it, it's going to pop up right there in my library. Now I'm ready to save my two save. Bleh. Now I'm ready to share my two lessons with the students that I've created. You can do this two ways. If you want them to do it as a student paced lesson, this means that they are going to do it on their own time. You might assign it in class and have everyone go off and do it on their own, or you might assign it as homework or an assignment. My students have an asynchronous day and I teach in a virtual school. So what that means on asynchronous day is they're working on something independently. There is no live class. So I'm going to assign these as a self-paced lesson. So all I'm going to do is click the student paste. Now I will warn you, you don't want to click the three dots and click share. That's if I wanted to share a lesson with another teacher. So maybe you are also teaching the same thing. And I say, hey, I already made a great lesson in Nearpod. Let me share that lesson with you for your library. This is not to share with students. To share with the students, you're going to click the student paste lesson. And you're going to either have them join by code. If they're having them join by code, they would type in join.nearpod.com and then type in the code. I find the easiest way for me to give it to the students is just to give them a direct link. Now, if you are in the classroom, it might be easier for you to have them do the code. But since I'm sharing it virtually already, it's really easy for me to just copy the link and have them go in the lesson that way. So let me show you how that works. Once the student puts that link in their browser, it's going to take them to the Nearpod lesson. They're going to type in their name and join the session. And now they're able to go through that lesson on their own as they go. Do, 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 do. It'll just take them through the lesson. So it's really easy to have them do that. Now, if I wanted to do a live lesson, this would be if I wanted to have the students um, all work on it together at the same pace. So what I would do for a live lesson is if I'm already in Zoom or my other platform, or if I'm just standing in front of a class, I would have them all get into the lesson. And it's going to be the same way. You're going to either give them a code or you're going to give them the link. Once I give them the link and they enter the lesson, 
all of the students are going to be working at the same pace. So you are going to actually control how the slides move. So you'll be able to see who has entered the uh, room in the live lesson. So you'll see down here where the people are. As students enter, their names are going to pop up on here. So you'll be able to see if your students have gotten in or not. As they finish the lesson, it's going to show you who's finished that slide. So you are able to actually talk over it. So maybe I wanted to do an introduction. I might talk to the students. They'd be able to hear me um, because they would have their Zoom room or their other platform open. Or if I'm just standing live in front of a live class, they'll be able to hear me talking. And then I'll be able to let them know, OK, we're going to go to the next slide. When I move the slide to the next slide, I can choose to have all devices have that slide move forward as well. So everybody's slide is going to move forward. Again, I'll be able to see who is on the slide with me and who's following along. And I'll be able to see their answers as they go as well. So it's really neat to do that as a live class. You'll see up here is the code as well. So if students are having trouble joining, they can click on that code. So that's how the live lesson is going to work. I can end the session. Yes, I want to end the session when I'm all done with the lesson. So it's really simple to get started. Those are the two main ways to start creating lessons. Either just hop over to that Nearpod lesson library and download one that you think is going to work for your lesson topic, or you can create your own pretty easily using the lesson in Nearpod button. I hope this was helpful. Uh, it's really easy to just kind of play around with it and see what happens. Um, the more you play around it, the more things you're going to discover, but that gives you the basics of just creating a simple lesson or downloading a lesson from the library into your your library.